Hello riders and not. Today on the vlog, we are at Attitude Cycles with Carter, who built this beautiful B-Rod. Why V-Rod? They are not, they're not making V-Rod anymore. This is actually a street rod anyway. Is it a street rod? It's the same thing. I call them all. It's the same thing. <laughs> I did the V-Rod because everything I had ever seen on V-Rods was, was the same thing. Was the, the tribal plastic um, fiberglass body kit, the tribal rear end. It just wasn't for me. I wanted to build something that was a bit more uh, what I liked and, and that, was, that was with the fat back wheel, which everyone does do, but usually you've got the pointy fenders mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. So I did it um, I did it like this basically, just just a little bit different. So you, you said that you didn't like them plasticky. Yeah. And you made it uh, well, the tank's original. I want to use mm -hmm. the original tank because everyone normally uses uh, yeah that tribal mm -hmm. body kit and I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah. With the fender I literally just just made a rolled or something that would you rolled it yourself. Would, would fit the tire correctly. Um, it was you a bit, rolled it yourself. It was a bit of rolling, a bit of knee and a bit of Hit him with a hammer. Yeah. You made it yourself. Yeah. Let's start with this. How right. old are you? 27. So as you see, there's so many young builders in this country. This is incredible. I'm always I, I, I was, I was 25 when it. I built it. I built it in 2020. So you were 25 when you built this? Yeah. Jesus. It doesn't seem that exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that exciting? No, it's when because you, when I, you started building I, I grew up with this. So, yeah. so all my friends, well not all my friends, I don't have many friends, but all, all the people that know me Sends and biscuits. Yeah, it, it's new to them, so so this is cool to them. To me, this is this is normal. You grew up like this. It's just very normal, like like if because if, your dad is a father of attitude. Yeah, types. if he didn't, if he didn't turn up to school picking me up on something like this, or or it it, it, it wasn't normal. That was normal. All my friends' dads used to, I mean, go and pick them up in their Renault McGanns and stuff. I'd get picked up on a chopper. You know what I mean? Like, all oh, right, I didn't like it too much. I hate going on the back of my dad. It's horrible, but. I don't do that no more. I'm a bit, a bit too old for that now. Um, but yeah. So when you passed your uh, riding license, yeah. as soon as you could? I actually took quite a lot of time. I, I enjoyed motocross bikes. Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't do motocross, nothing like that, but I just enjoyed the riding enduro bike. style mm -hmm. bikes rather than... I think it was because what I, what I could see in my head of what I would want from a custom bike, I could never afford. Mm -hmm. There was no way I could afford it. So uh, I've got an older brother. He, he had his one. He built it with my dad when he was 15 because he wanted to ride to his prom. I couldn't care less. It wasn't important to me because it was normal. So when I realised, oh, hold on, this is this is quite cool. So when I when I could finally afford to build something I actually wanted, that's when I did it. Because yeah, I, I kind of didn't want something that was half-assed. You know what I mean? Not not quite well wanted. This bike, did you build this for yourself? So I built this for myself. This is what I wanted from a bike. So I started doing it. Um, and then yeah, we obviously we had the lockdowns and whatever. So I had a bit more time on my hands and I had a couple of friends that were still working. So they come and sort of give me a hand doing bits and bobs at home. Not not working on it, mainly like lifting it and moving it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah, on your own. Yeah. Um, and where it was on air suspension, it wasn't completely set up. It was constantly stuck down on the floor, so I could never move it. Mm. Um, yeah, so I built it for myself. I have sold it now. Um, I, sold it, I sold it last year, but I only sold it because I was doing some adult stuff so I needed to free up some money so I thought to myself well rather than have a handful of bikes that I'd, it's not that I don't use but you can only use I don't get much time anyway so I can only use a bike I don't know a, a couple of times a week and I can chop and change between them so this one probably because it was the hardest one to ride it kind of kind of didn't get as much use so yeah a, a friend of mine who's bought a couple of bikes off of me was really interested in it as soon as I finished he, he always always has been every every time I finish something he likes it he's Right there, he's your in, in, number one customer. He's in the he's in the DMs waiting, <laughs> um, and the second then he he messaged me and said, "Well, look, when this is coming up for sale, let me know." Um, he's a big Porsche guy, so he liked the idea that obviously V Rod had a bit of uh, yeah. to do with Porsche with it. I have like a million questions just go after what you said. I'll go for it. Let's start with the I ramble, air suspension. I ramble on a lot. Air suspension. I think that's the, like one of the most impressive things. So. Isn't the, it? Yeah, what do you want to know about the air suspension? We want to see it first. Okay, 
I'll show you right there. Where's the keys? Air suspension moment. A magic. Just like that. Jesus. That's exciting. Can we do that on sports stuff? Yeah, we can do it on anything. <laughs> you can do it on anything. But that, well, that one there, that one hasn't got, that's front and back. So that's uh, yeah. on, the, on the forks as well. Because I wanted it to sit on the ground completely. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the purpose? What's the actual purpose, uh, except from impressing everyone with the air suspension? Uh, that is, is that is it. There, that's there it. is no, no room other, no. It's, it's not more comfortable to ride. It's not easier to get on the bike no. because it's long enough anyway, isn't it? Just because I'm a show off. Now, yeah. I've done air suspension on quite a few bikes. I, I like the soft tail frame. I really like a soft tail frame mm -hmm. on, a, on a twin cam bike, but um, I don't like the way it sits, so I put air suspension on them. Mm -hmm. When I was looking at doing the V-Rod, the best way to achieve that, oh, you can see I like the low look, that's my sort of style. Mm -hmm. The best way I could achieve it was by putting on air suspension. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it really hasn't got anything to do with any, I wish I could tell you it's for some fancy reason, but it's just because I thought it looked good. Yeah, Simple it does as. look good. Yeah. And moving from air suspension, you have a very, very fat back tire, and you mentioned that was your dad was who is just leaving. <laughs> He's actually not on a fat little bike for once. That's so cool. <laughs> I just mentioned him. <laughs> <laughs> and you said that your dad was one of the first ones in the country, if not the first one, who made... Uh, he did the first 360 in the UK, mm -hmm. um, as, far, as far as I know. Wait, oh yeah, I'm sure he did. Mm -hmm. I think so. So it's kind of like Someone a, a shop me, no key... Doubt. Yeah, he, he, uh, admittedly, like the fat wheels have slowly, slowly gone out of fashion, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, people don't do fat wheels no more, but, but the V-Rods don't look good unless you put fat mm -hmm. wheels on them. Mm -hmm. So when I wanted to put, I wanted to go a 360, which is obviously 30 millimeters wider than this, which is which so far is the widest you can, you can mm -hmm. get. But again, I, I didn't want it just to be like everyone else's. So instead of just getting a set of wheels made up, I got a set of wheels made up for the wrong bike. Mm -hmm. So when I was actually ordering the wheels for it, I ordered them to my spec because, yeah, I, I can't make wheels, I'm not that intelligent. The dealer, Custom Chrome, Andy at Custom Chrome, was saying to me, you're ordering soft tail wheels for a V-Rod. And I'm like, yes. He said, but that doesn't work. I said, I know, ignore me. Just, just order me these spec wheels. And he said, but it's not going to fit. I said, just order them. Um, because V-Rods normally pulley drive. Uh, V-Rods normally got a brake disc there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it doesn't work in combination. So I wanted it so when the camera's looking, the wheel's open, mm -hmm. front, yeah, both yeah, of them. Yeah. Um, the beautiful side and... Exactly, yeah, yeah not so beautiful side. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. side I don't really like, but that's, mm -hmm. I think that's on every bike. That's, mm -hmm. that's the good side, that's the yeah, bad side. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, then obviously I went a bit OTT and then I put the brake on the rear. Mm -hmm. I had a, a 62 tooth sprocket machined up to get the mm -hmm. gear ratio correct. So you made the sprocket, uh, the brake and the sprocket yeah, I, I didn't necessarily make it. I basically, I bought a kit and then remade the kit. Mm -hmm. So the kit on it normally is a... You can buy a kit, which is a brake and a sprocket. This one on there. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah. somebody just asked it about the other bike and they said that's really cool. The, the... Yeah, you, you, you buy a kit that's called a sprocket brake or a sprocket in America. Okay. So yeah, you put the, the disc is now the sprocket. Mm -hmm. You can do it with a pulley. So I've, been learned. I've literally just finished one on a breakout um, where it's actually still the pulley. So there's a it's, it's the pulley like normal, like you normally get a, a normal pulley, and it's got a great big caliper on the mm -hmm. pulley. So yeah, if you don't want to go to chain conversion, I wanted to go to chain conversion as well because you don't see it often. Mm -hmm. I do believe that's the only one I've ever seen with a sprocket brake on a V rod. Mm -hmm. Not, it was just I wanted to do it. I didn't do it for that reason. It was just, that yeah, was how yeah. I wanted to do it. I yeah. wanted to hide the brake as well. Obviously the brake calipers, you can't see it yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it's behind the, the brake I will show behind it the swing behind arm. The, yeah. Um, yeah. Can you mention the parts that like stands out for uh, you comparing with other V-Rods? Compared to other V-Rods? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the swing arm, that's a massive one. Me and my friend Dan, um, who helped me massively with the, with the swing arm. Um, so you built it? Yeah, yeah. So the swing arm was an original swing arm. We just cut to pieces. Mm -hmm. when, when me and Dan cut it up, we were both like, I don't think this can go back together. So we made a jig up. Basically, when normally they do the V-Rods, that piece is normally here. Mm -hmm. So when you widen them in the middle, mm -hmm. you have a big offset on the front mm -hmm. here. So instead of a, having the big offset, I almost wanted it like it had some big shoulders. Mm -hmm. So we cut the swing arm up and made it and you that made shape. It. 
you know, just made it fit like that. And little things as well, I wanted it to go a little bit lower than the fuel tank, so I dropped down the bracket. Lo loads mm -hmm. of pointless mm -hmm. little things that people will not For care about. people who don't know, the fuel tank is not this. Fuel tank is this. The fuel tank is here yeah. Yeah. on the V road. That's the air box. Um, the other thing is, is the top yoke. So the top yoke's normally got the risers built into it, mm -hmm. um, and obviously normally the bars are off there. I machined that flat, got rid of that, and put the GPS speedo mm -hmm. into it. Uh, welded on the bars um, and tried to internally wire it as best I can because aluminium is a little bit difficult. You made it? Yeah, well, not made it, yeah, I modified it, highly modified it. So made kind of like clip on looking. Yeah, without being clip ons. Without being clip ons. Yeah. Kind of like yoke ons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what you'd call it. How did you come yeah. up with that idea? Did, have you seen it somewhere or you just I've like seen it. that would be I've cool? I've probably seen it a billion times. Mm -hmm. like, we, we do it with the Springer. Um, front ends quite often. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been done a million. There's nothing but that's not that, been done. That kind of like drag bars, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, but it's still Whereas built off this, the top This yoke. one, Yokons. Yeah, okay, yeah, you can, the Yokons, there you go. It's a part Copy of the yoke, right isn't it? But then, then also, I wanted to get the front end so low, when I machined the forks down to get it as low, mm -hmm. um, I cut the middle brace out. So mm -hmm. normally there's a middle brace on the bottom mm -hmm. yoke, mm -hmm. but then you obviously yeah. you can't get it lower, so I cut it out and and just reinforce the aluminium behind it. So there's loads of little things. I remove like things that like no one ever does is they never change the levers or switch gear. They always have stock levers, stock switch gear. Mm -hmm. So I went for the, the older style custom tech um, levers, mass cylinders, uh, and put the Motown cool. switches. Yeah, they, they look cool. So that was the main thing. Um, yeah. And the clutch is nice. There's loads of different things like the indicators and rear lights instead of having your the standard. Mm -hmm. That's Kellerman. Yeah, That's so they're the Kellerman ones, one. yeah. So what do you have in the front? Yeah, they're right by the headlight. You can't see them, can you? No, I can't see them. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's the same ones? Yeah. That's what I want to put on mine. Yeah, so I put the Kellermans front and back. Um, Motor gadget. That's what I'm doing on my build. Just yeah. as I recognise parts that I'm using, I'm feeling a lot more cooler now. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're Motone switches, so they're, um, yeah, they were really nice. They were just a nice shape. Mm. Um, there's loads of different things, even when it comes to like the stand mount. Mm -hmm. Rather than have your normal stand with the big ugly spring and that big ugly mount, yeah, yeah. I put a nice uh, ball bearing, like. so that nice clips back and holds back by a ball mm. bearing rather than a spring. Mm. Um, the offset, normally when this offset was uh, made by Ricks, uh, instead of having a standard offset, I machined up uh, my own offset using Rick's bearing support uh, and then used an original casing, cut it down a little bit, made it... Because it, it looks big and clumpy on mm -hmm. all V-Rods. You have a look on the internet, all of this yeah, swing yeah, arm yeah. is big and clumpy. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. I kind of almost wanted it to look like, I know this sounds really stupid, but I wanted it to look standard. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to look like I haven't done anything to it. But obviously I have. So many people that don't understand they ask me if it's a night rod, and I'm like, no, it's not a fucking night rod. Mm. I did this. <laughs> <laughs> so, as well as making it looking so cool, have you done anything to perform better? No, never. D didn't, do, didn't touch the engine um, other than blacking it out, other than taking it apart and, uh, and powder coating some of the parts. It didn't need it more than anything. It's, uh, it's only 1100, but mm -hmm. it's plenty yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. You don't need that. Like, it's a different. Di Harley wise, so I've always used 1450 twin cams. So I went to the 1690 twin cam because I thought I needed that performance. You don't, and this outdid all of them. Mm -hmm. So it was so it was a completely different style of bike, uh, engine wise. I know they got the Harley logo on them, but then there's nothing Harley about them, which is what I kind of wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Something a little bit different, um, but yeah, no engine wise, I, I didn't need to touch it. It was so powerful. Mm -hmm. I don't know why anyone. I've seen people that put turbos on them. I, I. I think it's cool as fuck, but I don't understand it. It doesn't need it. Yeah. If you're doing it just for the reason of wanting to do it, then sweet, that's cool. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a performance, then yeah, more mm -hmm. of a man than I am. You don't, you don't need that. Maybe in Germany where you can ride any speed yeah, you want. Even if you went to a racetrack, there's only so... It's, you can only go so fast and hang on. Mm. I guess on some of this it's going to be a little bit different. Maybe on a stock V-Rod you, you, uh, you could maybe hold on better and handle better, but... Mm. Yeah, you don't. No, I didn't bother touching the engine. How about the brakes? Uh, yeah, the brakes. So mm -hmm. I, on the front, I've got a um, performance machine caliper. Mm -hmm. um, it, just because more than anything, it looks better. Beautiful. <laughs> it looks better. On the rear, I've got, I've got a, a, just a regular a universal sprocket brake. Um, but because of the size of the rear uh, disc sprocket, it, um, it brakes really well. Mm. The whole bike stops really well. If you would build it again now, 
would you do anything differently? Um, the only thing I'd make, what, the only thing I would do differently is possibly, possibly, I, I always thought that it looked a little front heavy to me. Mm -hmm. I would probably maybe almost make it longer. And I know that sounds stupid because it's already really long, mm -hmm. but I'd, I would, I think the back end needed a bit more. And I think I'd do it with the 360 rather than the 330. Mm -hmm. I think I'd go wider on the rear. Not much. I don't think I'd do another one. Mm -hmm. It gave me more headaches and. So if the, if somebody would come and say, oh, I've just seen that V rod on the vlog, can you make one exactly like this? Oh, yeah, I've had a couple of people do that. Um, oh yeah, I will, of course I'll make it again. I would make it, but not the same. One mm -hmm. because then that, I've built this for for myself, but I've now sold it to someone who uh, has a one off. Mm -hmm. If I built the exactly the same bike, it's not a one off no more, mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be that kind of guy. So yeah, I would certainly build it again you would have to pay me more money than I sold this for. <laughs> just because it's a headache, it's just, it's one of them bikes that like, it kept me awake at night so many different occasions. My partner on so many occasions said to me, go to sleep, stop searching eBay, stop searching Google, stop scrolling for this. Why are you stressing about this? Because where it's my passion and, and a hobby at the same, and a job all in one, uh, yeah, it can cause you some headaches. I, I, I spent quite a few nights sat up stressing about how I'm going to achieve that the next day, waiting to, waiting to go into the, to the work to fix whatever I couldn't do the day before because it was stressing me out. But If it is not the secret, mm -hmm. how much you sold it for? <laughs> um, to your mate, to his mate. Oh, phone's <laughs> ringing now. Wait there. Wait there. I won't answer, don't worry. Just That's a mate calling. Um, Uh, I I sold it for a lot of money. That's all I'm gonna say. I, I don't know. I don't want to expose him more than anything. I don't oh, care. Oh yeah. So maybe maybe his missus uh, don't know. No, I, I think everyone knows that he's got a lot of money. But yeah, um, it wasn't like I, it wasn't over the top. He's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He's he's bought three bikes off of me. Mm -hmm. He's a pain in the ass. Really good guy, but he's a pain in the ass. But he's always um he's always paid and it, there's never been an issue. And he's he's probably my not just my best customer because. He doesn't, because he pays up and whatnot. Mm -hmm. He's my best customer because he's just chilled, happy. Mm -hmm. well, he owns that bike now. Is it a special way to look after it? Like special, does he have to come to you to do services or it can be done anywhere? He rings me and shouts abuse at me. Really? And that's usually what happens. That's He'll usually. say, this fucking bike's broken. And I'll say, oh, I'll be there in a minute. And then goes, and what, and what is be, it? Uh, usually absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, because we're because we're good friends as well. Like we got a relationship where, yeah, if there's anything wrong with it, I'll fix it. But then, no, there, there's there's it, you service it the same as a normal V rod, so anyone mm -hmm. can do that. It's just uh, mechanics-wise, obviously, it's a little bit different. But so far, touch wood, we've not had, we've not needed to. Mm -hmm. You showed it was on Snap-on calendar. Yeah. It isn't in Snap-on calendar this year, February. Yeah, yep, February. Yeah. February next month. Yeah. The Vivo one's early. Yeah. Would you call it more of a show bike? Nothing's a show like bike to me. Like I like them having show quality, so they mm -hmm. they look really cool. Turned out. But any anyone that's seen my black and gold 38 will tell you I rode that as regular as I could. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't I wasn't touring Europe on it. That's mm -hmm. not, and that's not because it's not what it's for. You can go and do that all you want. I, wasn't, I didn't want to abuse the bike. It mm -hmm. was still to me. It's still uh, special. Yeah, it's still a, what, what would be the word? Like it's a, it's an investment to me. It's mm -hmm. still, it's still something I'm going to make money on in the future. So if I use and abuse it to the point where I batter and break it, like I see a lot of bikes coming in like that, then I'll be disappointed. Um, but no, the same as this, this, I use this all the time. And anyone that's seen me ride this will tell you I ride it like I've got two lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not, I'm not saying I'm racing around the TT, but I hammer it around, but Wheelies burn out. No, not no. wheelies. I, I do burn out a lot. There's actually three marks in the tire for the last like, time yeah. I did it. Um, yeah, I, I ride it like a bit of an idiot. Um, but yeah, it's not a showpiece, but it is a showpiece. That's mm -hmm. what I want. I want it. So if you want to get on and use it, everything on, I like to think that I make is very usable. It still has suspension. So, and that's I'm not saying hardtails aren't usable. We specialise in hardtails before we had that. Um, but a lot of people will give you the whole. Oh, I can't ride a hardtail every day. Oh, you can't ride a hardtail. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's still got suspension. So in theory, there isn't much more that is different to stock other than the size of the wheels. Obviously, loads is different to stock, but riding ability, as long as you can ride a motorbike, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, oh, you can't ride that with a wheel that big. It just means you can't ride a bike. 
You mentioned uh, they have quite a few bikes and this one is not the most comfortable. Yeah. Why? Uh, just a seating position. I wanted it to look like it was going a million miles per hour without sitting on it. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. So looking at it, oh, that bike looks fast. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it is or not, it's a different matter. Mm -hmm. um, so that was more than anything. I wanted the seating, the feet position rather than forward. Or mm -hmm. I, I wanted them sort of a little bit further back than mid. And obviously I wanted the bars drop down. So essentially it's the same at the same seating position as riding a, a race bike, an R1 or Can you a sit down? Ducati, yeah, yeah, crack on. A Ducati or whatever. So you feel like you're going fast already, don't you? I like it. <laughs> it's like a cafe racer. That's what it kind of, yeah, some people have described it as a bit of a cafe racer style, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. And you said it's not the most comfortable. No, it's just, well, it's, it's not the most, not, not that it's uncomfortable to ride, it's just, it's, it's awkward. <laughs> you got, you got a 330 back wheel and you're leaning yeah, over like that. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. awkward, but Maybe, then- Maybe, yeah, with a longer. I'm very much form over function. If it looks cool, then I'll put up with however it rides. Yeah, um, yeah. If it doesn't look cool, then, yeah, it's not for it me. It does feel all right. Yeah, but it feels cool, doesn't it? It feels very cool. It feels like you're going fast. It feels, it feels badass. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was what I was trying to achieve. Yeah, it's definitely a badass build. Definitely. Yeah. Would you say that this bike represents your style? Yeah, yeah. Low, short forks, tight. Every I just like everything. Like I'm sure you'll film my other one in a minute, where everything is just tight and compact, and mm -hmm. the forks can't be any shorter. Obviously, they're on air suspension anyway, so they go up. Um, it sits on the floor. I like everything very low to the ground, just because it looks better. Mm -hmm. When you've got something like that's jacked up in the air, it never looks very cool. Mm -hmm. um, where well, I think anything low looks cool, whether it's a car, bike, whatever, it possibly. I, I've ruined tons of cars in, uh, when I was a child, or I'd say child, 17, by lowering them too much to the point they're like scraping on the floor. <laughs> and then even with, I got a Chevy pickup and that's really low, but then... You have a Chevy pickup? Yeah, only a, it's a... You it's just a, filmed one. It's a modern one. Mine's a, mine's a, a 1990s um, C1500, so it's, it's modern, but it's, it's me all over. I can jump in it and I can drive it every day and use and abuse it. And, mm spin it around in circles and have fun. That's the main thing for me. I, I don't necessarily need something that is old because I'll break it. Mm. I've had a, I had a shovel head, uh, a couple of bikes before this, uh, a 75 shovel, and it wasn't that I broke it, it's, it's a shovel head. It's hard mm. work. I haven't got the mentality to own that anymore. I prefer the fact that, that they are simpler and easier to work on, but I just don't have the mentality anymore where I'm happy to fiddle around and tinker like if I want to go out and I want to go out on it now. Mm -hmm. You um, like to enjoy yourself not being broken. Yeah like I like the I like the whole point of owning an old bike and mm -hmm. I fully understand it even till last week I wanted to try and buy a pounded or a shovel head again but I like I need to have both now. I need to have two bikes. I need to have an old and a new. And then I don't mind. At the time I only had the shovel head so it kind of it kind of pissed me off. Um, anyone that owns a shovel head or an older Harley will tell you they're a pain in the ass and you've got to, you've got to really want one. And I didn't really want one. <laughs> and I'd done it because I just wanted to try one. Mm. Um, my dad's had shovel since I was a kid, so I thought, well, fuck it, I'll go for it. And uh, yeah, it, it, I loved the bike. Everyone loved the bike. It was a cool looking bike, but I didn't like the kickstart only. Uh, I didn't like the four-speed gearbox, which is all the things people like now. It seems it's, a, it's fashionable to have four-speed gearboxes, kickstarts, and shovel heads, and, and I'm happy to say that I'll go against the grain and say like, no, nah. <laughs> it's cool to own both, but I like to have something that's going to do everything it should do for me. For for me, my last bike, a lot of people had seen it. It was a, a gold-plated wheels, 24-carat gold-plated spokes, and loads of gold on it. My brother actually called it the Gypsy Caravan. It was everything he hated. But that you was. You need to send me a picture. I need I, to show I'll send you a picture of it. But that that was fine. That was cool. It, I, again, I understand people's opinions. Gypsy Caravan. Does this one has a name? No. I don't, I don't really name bikes. I'm not really one of them kind of people. I don't really name bikes. I, all my bikes have 38 on them, so mm -hmm. which is my initials, 3C8H, mm -hmm. um, which is it's just my style, I like to call it now. That's as far as I go on naming them. I got, I'm up to 38 Mark V now. So how, how do you call them? Like the white 38, or slightly older 38, that newer I just, the 38, uh, not finished? Yeah, that's literally how I call it. <laughs> like on my phone, I have like people who have bought them off me, or uh, so Dave who's bought, who's having that one built. Um, 
and uh, the guys having that one built. I've got all their names saved under such and such 38 Mark III, such and such 38 Mark II, such and such 38 Mark V, <laughs> just so I know who they are and what bike they have. Can yeah. we here? Yep. Uh, I've got to remember what button is to start in now. <laughs> uh, wait there, let me click that first. Jesus, could you, uh, how would you call Quiet it? it down? No. I should do, my uh, ears Find out how many decibels. Uh, no, measure. the police could probably tell me one day. Yeah, but one day. Yeah, it, I, I wanted it loud. Admittedly, you're inside as well. It yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. 10 times yeah, louder. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem that loud outside. <laughs> It is loud, uh, but it's nice loud. It's, it's very... Uh, uh, it's a nice deep. crisp sound, yeah. 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 Uh, that's the first time it started in, I don't know, six months. Have you changed the exhaust? Uh, so the exhaust is standard literally up until then. I just added the mm -hmm. tips on. Mm -hmm. I, didn't want, I didn't think it needed any more than that. It, was, it, it worked perfect yeah. because originally the old exhaust come all the way along mm -hmm. here. Yeah. That's when I then put the air tank there to cover that old bracket mm -hmm. up. I didn't think it needed anything else. Mm -hmm. I could have gone real fancy and it didn't need that. And this is your next build, yeah. with generation 38, is this? Uh, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> if I'm honest, I, I started certain ones before, other, before I started this one. So it's whatever one, whatever this is, this could either be four, five or six, depending on what one's finished first. Okay. So I have three that I'm currently doing. So how do you call it, silver 38? No, I just call it, yeah, 38, I don't know. 38. 38 one of them. on the left. 38, one of them. <laughs> um, it's a 1690cc twin cam. It was mm -hmm. originally a, a soft tail standard. No, it was a soft tail slim. I lied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just uh, cut it up. You mm. just cut it up completely. I can see the frame is... Yeah, I modified the frame because it has a square okay. top tube, which I absolutely hate. It has these horrible fender rails, and then you have your fender mm -hmm. rails there. I cut all of that off, modified the frame. Um, I kicked the uh, headstock out a bit modified the swing arm so obviously it uh, through the geometry out so it lays frame on mm -hmm. the floor because when you lower it normally it doesn't sit on the floor um, yeah I, th I, th I think we have to finish for today and I think I have to come back mm -hmm. to film your other bikes finished, one yeah. of the 38s yeah um, that one obviously won't be too long till it's finished mm -hmm. um, I've got to finish where I said my baby's due in June I want it done before June yeah otherwise I ain't gonna have no time oh, to be doing it baby yeah no, uh, that's, that's the good thing so I, I look after my niece uh, a couple of times, but it's pretty cool because I can just sit them in the corner and they if, can sleep away and I can carry on. I don't do... If they do sleep. Yeah, if they don't sleep, yeah. <laughs> can I ask you for something? You said you will have a baby girl. Yeah. Can you promise me mm. that you will teach her some basics? No. Please. No, I don't. Please. Uh, I, want, I, want, I want her to go and do something very intelligent. Maybe it sounds sexist right now, but if it was a boy, it might be different. But where it's a girl, it does I, sound sexist. Actually, uh, yeah, but I kind of just, I kind of, and that's not, be, and that's not me being sexist. I kind of worry more. I feel like boys are meant to be bruises, yeah, and, yeah. and you kind of like. It, it doesn't sound sexist in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, it does yeah. sound like a protective. Yeah, yeah, and, that's all it will come down to. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I'll let her make her own choices. Yeah. Every, it was but for, Don't be overprotective. I, I have a sister. Let, let her use a grandma. I have a sister as well, and she rides stuff like this. She, mm -hmm. she doesn't have a bike, but she, she's ridden stuff like this loads of time. She, but it wasn't. I don't, I'm not saying forced in a bad way, but it was forced upon me, my brother and my sister. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think I would take a back step and let her do what she wants to do. Yes, yes. If so she wants to in, get into bikes or whatever, then okay, so be it, as much as I probably won't like it. I think I'll come back in like 15 years and he will be building a Mark 100, <laughs> 158 38 for his daughter. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like that, that, that was what I, that, we found out it was a girl recently and, and I was a bit like, oh. and my partner was like, what? And I said, well, if it was a boy, it would appreciate this more. And she was like, no, it would appreciate it no matter what. But I think, I think, yeah, you just get into your head that, um, that you worry more about, yeah, I, I worry more that she's a girl if she fell off or something like that. But that's just, yeah. 
don't know. The girls are tougher when I know they are. I'm tougher than me. <laughs> Anytime I've fallen off, I've just let on the floor crying. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I'll teach you how to use a spanner. That's one thing I need to... Oh. I used to do little quizzes when I was a kid where my dad would stand from here to the wall away with a 10 mil spanner or 11 mil spanner and uh, uh, tell, tell him what size it was and stuff. So I, I could instantly recognise these things. So, I used to have to go to a toolbox and I'd get the, get the correct spanner out in the right socket and I had to do it in the times. It's not a joke. I used to have to, he'd say, oh, go get me a 14 mil socket. I'd run to the toolbox and he'd go, quick, 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 and you'll be under pressure to get that 14 mil out and then run back. But now I'm exactly the same. Someone, someone uh, is trying to help me. I'm like, hurry up. Like, how do you not know what a 13 mil spanner looks like? like <laughs> come on. They, 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 if I say, go get a 15 mil spanner, they'd be looking everywhere from a six all the way up to a 24, trying to work out what one it is. And, like I would know by sight, so I'll yeah. do that. That's yeah, enough. Do that. That's yeah, enough that's about me. enough. Thank you very much for that. No I really problem. appreciate no it problem. from all the women in the world. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.